I'm here to talk today about green and sustainable chemistry, um, try to indicate how the terms can be used uh, interchangeable and what is the slight difference of uh, using green and sustainable chemistry and what people uh, think about that in the world of chemists and um, people working in industry. Um, I will start with the colors of chemistry. It's not the first time, green is not the first color attributed to chemistry. Um, for many years, been, uh, chemistry was connect, uh, connected with black. Black coming from industrial processes, from mountains of coal, from black smoking, industrial revolution, and so on. Another typical color that people had in mind when they, when they hear about chemistry is red. Red chemistry associated with disaster, injury, um, and uh, destruction, like the incidents like the one in Bhopal, uh, the one in Chernobyl, um, or the, boi the boiling, the burning of the Cuyahoga River. Um, many of those processes which are black or red or both are actually attributed with, with chemical industry and right now um, alternatives, green alternatives are looked for and a new color comes into play. Chemistry is now uh, related to as green. Um, green chemistry uh, associated with the term green there are other terms like clean or sustainable chemistry and um, the term green was introduced in 1990, uh, around 1998 first definition uh, but uh, in 1999 Leitner uh, talks about the fact that uh, the, two ter the three terms are actually interchangeable. Um, and uh, in 2008, uh, Tundo, it's, uh, it's um, cited here as um, term green and sustainable being uh, accepted as meaning the same thing, uh, green chemistry or sustainable chemistry, the chemistry which does not harm the environment. Um, this is a citation from a paper published in 2010 by Lindhorst who actually monitored the number of times that the term green chemistry is mentioned in literature along or by comparison with environmental chemistry, sustainable chemistry, clean chemistry and benign chemistry. And as you can notice here uh, for the green chemistry the term started uh, to appear in the early 90s and then about mid 90s, uh, this coincided with a time when the um, Green Chemistry Presidential Award was introduced by um, Environmental Protection Agency, the term green chemistry actually um, overpassed all the others by far. So what is green chemistry? Green chemistry, and as you notice, even by Anastas and Warner in their 98 publication, also known as sustainable chemistry, is the design and implementation of chemical products and processes which are harmless to the environment and humans. Green chemistry is also always connected, the definition of green chemistry is always connected with the 12 principles of green chemistry and I have here a list of those principles classified according to the uh, ACS sponsored site in two categories. Principles which had to do with reducing the risk and principles that has to do with minimizing the environmental footprint, the total of 12. And, uh, Obviously, um, you, can, you can read both those principles and find them um, explained in different ways everywhere where green chemistry is introduced. The main idea is that minimizing the waste, designing for self safer chemicals, uh, reducing the energy, um, trying to have atom efficient um, reactions, uh, reduce the derivatization, uh, monitor on, t on, uh, on uh, going processes, industrial processes, all of those are uh, actually attributes of a process called green and sometimes sustainable. So you have here a couple of more of those principles uh, including the encourage for energy efficiency and use of renewable feedstock. 
So what is the industry doing with those um, new definitions and new principles and how they do apply them? Uh, more often than not, um, some, industrial, um, some big industrial companies are trying to introduce the term green, green, green chemistry and apl application of green chemistry um, for the fact that it is attractive, is ecologically sound and has good um, connection with the public. But there are um, a series of uh, industrial um, processes and companies which are actually trying to apply the green chemistry simply because there are um, better incentive than the image that they project to the uh, public and those are uh, monetary in incentive, less uh, productiv higher productivity and uh, better revenue. And for that, I want to give you the example of the synthesis of maleic and hydride. And I want to mention that this synthesis actually was changed for a traditional and non-green procedure to a greener procedure um, in the early 70s, long before the term green chemistry was ever introduced. So what's happening here? I have one, two, three, four principles of green chemistry who are actually very nicely applied to this change in the process of producing maleic and hydride. Um, the old process was starting with benzene, uh, oxidation with oxygen from air. Second one starts with butane uh, leading to maleic and hydride. So the lower one is the greener process. Long before the terms green or sustainable was ever um, used. So what is the advantage of the second process? Atom economy, six carbon enters in the reaction from benzene, two are lost, only four retain in maleic and hydride. With butane, four enter, four comes out, 100% atom e um, economy. Um, safer processes, easier to recover the maleic and hydride, no need to uh, take care of the byproduct. The benzene process also produces carbon um, oxides and uh, acetic anhydride. The greener process doesn't. And also the toxicity aspects related with benzene are obviously another big advantage. So what is the, what is the uh, conclusion that I want you to take from this example? Is that green chemistry applied industrially, it's a yeah, it's a concept that actually gives a name to a drive that it's actual continuing to the industry to make the process better, more efficient, and um, more financially sound. Um, and I would like to conclude with the idea that um, a big majority of the uh, chemists and engineers are talking right now about the fact that green chemistry stays at the core, with its, with its princip principle, stays at the core of greening the profession and the industry, while um, the sustainable chemistry is the application of those principles and um, definitions to grow into an industrial process. So, Green chemistry, the core, the R&D, the design, the effort to produce and come up with new technology. The sustainable chemistry is the application of the industrial, those, those concepts, technologies, and so on, in the real world, in the industry, with the aim to make it better and better and cleaner and cleaner. And I want to let you with the idea that the chemistry is not even neither black or red, and it's not entirely green, but certainly it's part of the solution because it will allow the development of new technology and the progress without harming human health and environment.